Osteopids were probably the base of the tetrapod family tree. Asthenopteran shares anatomically many unique features in common with the earliest known tetrapods. The earliest known fossilized evidence of bone marrow has been found in this species, which may be the origin of bone marrow in tetrapods. It differs significantly from some later carboniferous tetrapods in the apparent absence of a recognized larval stage and a definitive metamorphosis. One of the key transitional features of Pandrichthys is its humerus. During the transition from fish to tetrapods the limbs began to move and became located at a right angle to the body rather than being oriented toward the posterior end. As an intermediate in the fish amphibian evolution, it had the capacity to breathe air. Tictuilic has fins that are supported by a tetrapod bone structure and it seems it is the first fish apod with a neck that can move. But why did fishies like Tictuilic evolve in the first place? Scientists think that shallow lakes, streams and rivers were subject to drought, so creatures that could survive drier conditions longer were more likely to survive. Ventes to go would have been a primarily aquatic predator that specialized in hunting fish, it was able to manipulate its prey in the mouth so that they were swallowed head first and then avoid any spines. Acanth Ostica didn't walk at all, but rather used its eight-digit forelimbs to navigate weed-choked swamps in pursuit of prey. At first, they didn't evolve specifically for the purpose of walking on land. It may use the suction method of feeding. It opens its mouth so fast and wide that it creates a vacuum inside its mouth that sucks water and the prey inside. Ichthyostica is considered to be one of the important transitional links between marine and fully terrestrial vertebrates. It was able to spend time upon the land without suffocating under its own weight. Despite terrestrial adaptations of the pedipiece, its ears is structured in a way that would enable it to work best when underwater, implying that it would have least spent some time in the water. Crassagerinus was probably a fast-moving predator and had unusually large jaws. It also had large eyes, suggesting that it was either nocturnal, or lived in very murky water. The appearance of Spathicephalus is unlike that of any other early tetrapod, with a flattened, square-shaped skull and jaws lined with hundreds of very small chisel-like teeth. During Permian, increasing aridity and the diversification of reptiles contributed into a decline in terrestrial temnospondyls, but semi-aquatic and fully aquatic temnospondyls continued to flourish. Aerops were among the most formidable early Permian carnivores and perhaps the only ones capable of competing with the dominant synapsids of the time. Its anatomy suggests it was a poor swimmer. This period was a time of plant and insect diversification and cacops may fed on insects. It is believed that they hunted at night, to avoid the larger predators. Platyhistrix appeared rather unusual, the dorsal vertebrae were extraordinarily lengthened and in life they probably formed a skin-covered sail. Peltobotrichus had developed an armadillo-like armored plating covering its body and tail to protect itself against predators such as the large therapsids like gorgonopsids. As temnospondyls continued to flourish and diversify in the late Permian, a major group called Stereospondyli became more dependent on life in the water. The vertebrae became weak, the limbs small, and the skull large and flat, with the eyes facing upwards. During the Triassic period, 
these animals dominated the freshwater ecosystems, evolving in a range of both small and large forms. Mastodonsaurus was one of the largest. These animals spent most or all their lives in water as aquatic predators, catching their prey by a sudden opening of the upper jaw and sucking in fish or other small animals. Archegosaurids like Archegosaurus or Platyoposaurus are crocodile-like and they probably shared similar lifestyle. Prionosuchus is the largest known species of Temnospondyli with its 9 meters long. It lived in a humid and tropical environment. It had a heat balance, gas exchange, osmorgulation and digestion more similar to that of fish than modern aquatic amphibians. Trematosauria is one of the major group of Temnospondyla amphibians that survived the Permian Triassic extinction event, but only one lineage, the Brachiopoids, continued until the Cretaceous period. Gerotorax had an unusually shaped skull with angular protrusions on the sides. This looked vaguely similar to the skull of the earlier, unrelated, amphibian Diplocaulus, but was not so developed. Large assemblages of metaposaurs with hundreds of individuals preserved together have been found in the southwestern United States. They have often been interpreted as mass death events caused by droughts in floodplain environments. These environments seem to have had little diversity, as they were inhabited almost exclusively by metaposaurs. The Triassic-Jurassic extinction event led to the extinction of most Mesozoic temnospondyls. Brachiopods survived and grew to large size during the Jurassic. Cooler such as inhabited rift valleys in southern Australia during the early Cretaceous. During this time the area was below the Antarctic Circle, and temperatures were relatively cool for the Mesozoic. It is known to be the last of the Temnospondyli order. Siderops is a close relative of the Kula Suchus, but it lived during the Jurassic period. All lipospondyls are characterized by having simple, spool shaped vertebrae that did not ossify from cartilage but rather grew as bony cylinders around the notochord. Many hypotheses suggest they are the ancestors to the modern amphibians. The white head of the Diplocaulus could have acted like a fin, helping the creature glide through the water. Another possibility is that the shape was defensive, since even a large predator would have a hard time trying to swallow a creature with such a wide head. Pantelus was probably a largely terrestrial animal, judging from its well-built legs. In the advanced genus Phlegethonchia the skull is very light and open, reduced to a series of struts supporting the brain case against the lower jaw, just as in snakes, and it is possible that the AI stopods filled the same ecological niches in the Paleozoic that snakes do today.